Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA new topics added to the course 2125. And this is section 3.2, troubleshooting multi VLAN issues. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain how to delete VLANs and troubleshoot DTP and VTP configurations. Deleting VLANs. A VLAN may have to be removed from the VLAN database. Deleting a VLAN on VTP server, switch removed it from the VLAN database for all switches in the VTP domain. Deleting a VLAN on VTP transparent mode, switch only removes it from the VLAN database VLAN on the specified switch or switch stack. Now, we can, we can pretty much delete all the VLANs apart from VLAN 1, 1 000, the range 1002 up to 1005. So when we say show VLAN brief, you can see what VLANs we have. And um, show VLAN ID, you can see, for example, ID 99, we can see what ports are configured on that VLAN. We've been using, a, if you've been watching this section, this is a, the lab that we've been using. And this is our VTP information here. So for example, if I go and say, um, go to switch one. So show session, you can see that switch one is DLS one, number seven. So if I go to 7, press enter, and I say show VLAN brief, show VLAN brief, we can see that we have VLAN 10, 20, uh, 34, and 200. Okay, cool. Now this is our, this is our uh, VTP switch, uh, service switch. So show VTP status, we can see that the revision number is, uh, sorry, revision number is 3. Okay. And uh, Cisco VTP domain name Cisco, right? Before we had the higher revision, I don't know, it went to three. Okay, um, so show VLAN brief. We can see that there's one interface here, uh, users interface, FA012, yeah? And it's connected to router three, this is a router three. So if I go to that machine, so if I open, uh, let's resume that. And we can see that we, I'm going to start pinging from, from this PCA to the router, uh, I think it's router 3, yeah, router 3. And I'm going to just continue pinging. And then we're going to delete one VLAN and see what happens, yeah? Oh, okay, so this IP config, and it's 34.5 is the IP address, and the IP address of the gateway, which is router 3, is 34.3. Okay, so ping. Uh, 10.1.34.3 minus t it's continuous ping yeah forever okay now what happens if i go and delete one the vlan 200 oh sorry 34 right config t uh let's say uh, no vlan 34 vlan uh sorry vlan 34 right now what what do you think it will happen to this fa012 See, the pings are stopped there, yeah? The pings are not working. So, FA012, do you think it will go to VLAN 1 by any chance? We can check. So, do show VLAN brief. No, nope. VLAN 12 is not there. So, for it, sorry, for it, FA012 is not there. We said that if it's not here, it's probably trunking. Okay, so we'll say, okay, do show interface trunk. Uh, 12 is not trunking either so if you delete a vlan by 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 mistake or by choice then you have to make sure that you do port you put the ports in the cr in the one vlan that you have first before you make the delete before you delete them or before you delete the vlan so remove the port put them to an active vlan or if they off ports and put them to an unactive vlan but don't delete the VLANs while it still has ports in it. VLAN 1, which is default, and 1002 up to 1005 are default. You cannot delete them. So if I bring that VLAN back, so VLAN, uh, sorry, VLAN 34, name R3 was R3 to R4. Okay, exit. Then, then our pings are going to start working. Well, after your spanning tree has 50 seconds. 30 to 50 seconds after the Spanish tree has done his thing, right? Oh, what? Let's, let's see it. So, 
do show spanning tree for VDAN 34. So we're still learning. Uh, 12 is forwarding, but uh, because of the P uh, port 3, it's connected to the router. We're still learning. Okay, now it's forwarding, so you can see there it's forwarding. Okay, cool. So if I go back to our slides, don't delete. Well, you can't delete we done one. You can't even change it, the name or anything. You can't edit it. So you can delete the the ex this normal range and extended range. So use the no VLAN and VLAN ID to configuration command to delete the VLANs. So for example, deleting VLAN 99. Show VLAN 99, ID 99, it's not on the database. Now by default, the VLANs are, are stored on the database VLAN.dat. So to see that, say do show flash. So here, if you don't want, if, if you want to factory reset the switch, you will have to say erase startup config start up start up config and then um, delete vlan dot that you sure you want to delete it yep you want to delete it and then reload well i'm not going to do it but that's that's how you do it okay the next thing uh, troubleshooting dtp issues dynamic trunking protocol trunk mode mismatches one one trunk port is configured with the trunk mode off and the other trunk mode on this configuration error causes the trunk link to stop working. Solution shut the interface, correct the DTP. So you remember the DTP. DTP is dynamic trunking protocol. So it had few modes. You can either set it manually as on, you can turn it off. So how can we set it on? So if I go back into, uh, let's do one here, one slide. So how can we set it? If I, one mode is like switch port, switch port mode trunk right and if you get this command like this yeah capital letters command rejected now the problem is that this switch can support two protocols the switch can support isl and dot one q so the switch says okay well it's rejected because i don't know what you want you want me to be trunk, but you need to tell me first, do you want me to be ISL or dot one q So you would say, okay, switch port. Let me write it with Lola. Switch port trunk mode. Uh, switch port trunk, sorry, encapsulation dot one q Okay, and then switch port mode trunk. Right. Now manually we set in this switch to be a trunk port. If you want it not to be a trunk mode, you say switch port mode um, access. That's all, trunk enough. Or you can let it be um, dynamic. So switch port mode dynamic dynamic disable where is desired. Now that you're asking DTP to get the trunk in, so you want the mode to be desirable, or you want the mode to be um, auto. Now, desirable is desiring to be de uh, trunk mode. Well, auto is not, but it does not. Uh, if you say if you if you say if you want to be desire if you want to be a trunk, then fine. But if you don't say anything, then it's going to be in an access port, right? So here, let me just go and try and put these all these commands in, on our um, router here. Oh, sorry, the switch. So config t. Uh, let's pick an interface. So do show ip interface brief one there is no active interface so let's just want to see these commands so let's let's pick this 11 right so interface fa0 11 now this will support both this will say isl in dot one q so if we say switch port mode trunk <laughs> like this it will give us ah command rejected see command rejected lower letters yeah <laughs> i thought this is big capital command rejected so it says, well, I don't know really, do you want, it's auto, yeah? So do you want ISL or dot one q So what you first need to do, you need to say switch forward mode trunk encapsulation dot one q And then mod trunk, it's fine. Or you can say switch forward mode access, which we are not, we are disabling trunk it. Or you can let it to be desirable. So let me just copy this up to here. Copy. And then question mark. You see, you have a desirable. 
set the trunk in mode dynamic negotiating parameter desirable so DTP is going to start running or auto there's not big help menu here auto says well user auto so first like if you if the other side negotiates to be trunk then fine if the other side doesn't negotiate to be trunk then we're not gonna be an access port yeah so desirable some of the switches have a desirable some of them are have uh, dynamic so let's let's pick another interface show IP interface brief and see the default um, for example let's pick a 10 that's that's I haven't touched that so show interface FA010 switchboard. Now here in the top, you can see on this switch, which is layer three switch, DLS is a layer three. So if I if show it here, it's a layer three switch. This switch, the port is in dynamic auto. That's the the administrative mode. By default, is in dynamic auto. So if I connect the layer three switch to another layer three switch, they're not going to be a trunk port, right? So this is. Um, a layer 3 switch so show CDP neighbor detail for example then we see the DLS 2 for here it's another layer 3 switch 3560 so if I go to DLS 2 for example which is 8 show interface FA010 switch port if you go to the top see this is auto as well it's down because there's nothing connected but it's auto so if I connect back to back these two switches they're not gonna be trunking if I go to ALS 1 so for example say ALS 9 show interface FA 010 switch port here okay this is dynamic auto as well it's 2960 but if it was 3550 it will be dynamic desirable 2950 will be dynamically desirable. So 3560 and 2960 is dynamic auto. So you have to make sure that you don't let them be in dynamic both sides auto because if both sides are auto, if this side is auto and this side is auto, then here this is an access port. If one side is desirable, right, and the other side is auto, then it's fine. This is going to be a trunk port. So this is going to be a trunk. If both sides are desirable, then fine. Trunk, even faster trunk. If you have one side to be trunk, the switchboard mode to be trunk, and the other side to be desirable, you still have a, a trunk. The problem is if one side is trunk and the other side is access, then this is an access port. Okay, or, or you're not gonna have any connectivity there anyway. Okay, um, allowed VLANs. So some VLANs, you for example, you can deny some VLANs to go through your your uh, network. Um, say uh, in here, let me let me connect here. There's a PC connected to uh, switch one. Okay, so there's a PC connected here, and if I go to one of the switches and I don't allow any VLANs to come there, so if another switch, another PC is connected to the other switch, and that VLAN is not going through, then obviously you don't want to have it. You don't want to have a traffic. What I'm trying to say. Here, Imagine this then. Is this is a traffic. This traffic is for VLAN. Uh, say, say here VLAN 20. Now here on the switch on DLS one, you can say, okay, well VLAN 20, uh, we're not allowed, not allowed. So not allowed VLAN 20 on this port. And there's there's like here there's no connection. All the traffic has to go this way. Uh, I can do this one here and there's PC here there's a PC here on VLAN 20 so as the traffic is going here is you're stopping VLAN 20 so this traffic is not going to go here it's not going to reach this destination so how you do you okay let me just put it back please get rid of all this so you have to go to the port so for example config T interface FA010 switch port trunk then you have allowed and then what what you want to allow allow VLAN uh, what the, you can allow all VLANs no no VLANs so allow VLAN except VLAN 20 for example except VLAN so VLAN 20 so VLAN 20 so what you're doing now if I do show uh, it, it's not going to actually be a, it's because I did it in non-working 
poor you're not gonna see it okay so let's see let's let's pick port we are in ls1 let's pick port 13 so port 13 and we don't want to allow any vlans coming from this side so okay so config t interface fa013 so at the moment we are only allowing these yeah so we allow all of them but the active is only these yeah so we don't want to allow these yeah so we can say switch port trunk allowed vlan except uh 10 10 i'm not sure if we have to do it here with the spaces 10 20 34 and 200 yeah okay do show interface trunk now we can see that before it said allowed all vlans right so if you go here it says allow all the vlans on port 13 but now on port 13 it says okay well uh, not all vlans like other two ports it says f allow from vlan 1 to 9 skip 10 11 to 19 skip 20 21 to 33 skip 34 34 to 199 skip 200 and the rest okay so that's that can cause a problem if you if you are not allowing some vlans like active vlans and then native vlan mismatch so vlans on the switch they, they have to match the native vlan so if i you can see that all of them is one the native vlan for all the switches if i change the say say on this switch i go config t interface fa let me just remove that what we did earlier yeah uh switch for trunk allowed control a to go in front no to remove that to show interface trunk now that's going to back to normal okay so switch port trunk and then what we want to do change the native so native for example native and say native vlan for us will be 200 now one native vlan 200 to other native vlan to uh one is is a problem because the native vlan has to match as you can see lots of errors are going to start right away and then we we put the inconsistent state and it's not working <laughs> it causes a lot of problems okay so native vlan mismatch now native vlan means there's no tag in here so if you remember the native vlan we don't put tag in if i do do show interface trunk you can see that pruning is not enabled the vlan in spanning tree forwarding state and not pruned so all of these so for example see now consistency restored because i removed that you can enable the, uh, the pruning it's very easy and he says okay well if i don't have vlan 20 or 200 why why is suddenly broadcast about these vlans anyway we're just wasting bandwidth on our trunk so you can say switchboard trunk pruning and then that's it so vlan uh, vlan we want to say vlan 20 vlan 200 do show interface trunk so here VLAN is spanning tree forward and not pruned. For example, these are your VLANs. There's connection to all of these ports, so that's why not pruned. Well, here you can see the port 16 is not is not in spanning tree. It's not in forward state. Troubleshooting VTP issues: incompatible VTP version. VTP versions are incom incompatible with each other. So version one, two, and three. Solution: ensure that all switches are capable of supporting the required version. Now, unless you change into VTP version 3, leave them to VTP version 1. Version 1 and version 2 are exactly the same. Version 2 only supports token ring, so you don't have token ring. Guarantee you. VTP password issues. If VTP authentication is enabled, switch must all have the same password configured. Solution, make sure you put the same password. Incorrect VTP mode name. So, for example, an improperly configured domain name affects VTP synchronization devices so for example if one of the devices says um do show vtp status this domain name is cisco in capital and the other side is client then obviously they're not going to synchronize the, the uh, vtp all switches set to the vtp clients so make sure that one of the switches at least is on the server mode because you want to create domains and incorrect revision numbers if the switch with the same vtp domain name but higher configuration revision is added to the domain invalid vlan can be propagated and valid vlans can be deleted so this we talked about in previous section so if you 
if you bring a switch with a higher VLAN, the higher VTP revision number, then make sure the, there's no VLANs in it. Otherwise, the good VLANs get deleted. Okay, what I think here that they don't explain that much is about transparent mode. So, okay, let me just delete this this line here, like this. Yeah. So I just put. Yeah, I want to delete this. I just want to show you here about transparent mode. Yeah. So here, like this. So imagine that this switch is in in um, a server mode. So yeah, BTP, uh, BTP server, right? And this one here, this DLS2, is VTP client. So VTP client, right? And ALS2, for example, is VTP client as well. But ALS1 is our VTP transparent. So VTP transparent. So what happened, for example, if I create a VLAN here? So say on this VTP server, I create a, a new VLAN. So VLAN, a VLAN, I don't know, say uh, 123. What this is gonna do, because they have the same domain name, they are in the same domain, say Cisco, this is gonna increment revision. So revision is gonna increment from four, for example, to five, right? So we increment the revision. Now here in the client mode, revision, is four. Just imagine that. So we created VLAN 123, we incremented our revision number, and we send this information to this client. This client is going to increase increment the revision from four to five and add VLAN 123 on his own database. Right? This server, the database, or the VLAN database is on VLAN.dat. Yeah? They are only in RAM. The database gets deleted. Now, this client. After it updates itself, it sends it to transparent mode. Transparent mode says, okay, well, I'm the same domain, but I'm in transparent. I don't really synchronize with my VLAN with yours. But the transparent mode is going to relay that information. It doesn't drop them. It just relays it to this client mode. So this client mode can do the same. Can increase the revision number to five and create new VLAN, VLAN 123. Now, if transparent mode revision number here, Revision, it's always zero. So if I create VLAN, uh, I don't know, let's say 321 here, the, this, just sits quietly, doesn't synchronize it with anyone. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnichi and bye-bye.